Hey guys, what's up? Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles. Uh, today I'm here to check out Brainworks' first foray into the world of VST plugins. Uh, this is their Synth PX Oberhausen. Uh, it's based on the famous Oberheim SEM module. It's a super fat sounding synth and it's got some really cool little features that make it stand out from, from other synths uh, in this category. Uh, let's dive in, we're going to check out the controls, the GUI, and then uh, have a listen to some of the sounds that we can get out of this. Let's take a look. Okay, so you'll notice I have uh, BX Oberhausen loaded up here into Native Instruments Complete Control. It is indeed fully NKS compatible, so all the presets are NKS compatible as well. All the controls are mapped to my Native Instruments controller, uh, which means that I can easily browse through patches just using the patch browser on the keyboard. Find what you want and easily load that in. Cool, and uh, we're gonna kind of just go through the uh, the overview of the controls for this quickly. Um, what I want to do first is just initialize the patch. Now there isn't really an easy dedicated uh, initialize uh, patch for this. Um, I'm told it's going to be added in update. Um, what we're going to do is just go into our preset browser over here. Um, I know that there is a init preset saved here. We can just double click that one. And then we have it reloaded in. So that's your preset browser. Um, this will have all your tags and stuff um, if you're not using the Native Instruments um, Complete Control. Uh, you can also access your presets here. All the different presets are categorized in this section. This is to save, undo, undo and redo. Uh, this will adjust the size of the GUI over here. This one uh, flips open a top panel, which includes your FX, appreciator, and mod uh, sections. And we'll come back to this in a bit. Um, just looking at the top, we've got a favorite section over here. You can favorite um, presets. You have a tuning section and uh, this little MIDI control thing over here. You can uh, easily learn MIDI functions um, using your controller as well. So we'll just disable that for now. And let's take a look at the actual controls on the synth itself. So starting in the general section, you have volume control here, uh, a portamento control, legato can be enabled. And you also have the control for your pitch, um, pitch bend, how much you want to do up and down. Okay, uh, down at the bottom we have a transpose section. This transposes the entire uh, output of the synth. Then we have the voices section down here, and this is where things get interesting with Brainworks' proprietary TMT modeling technology. Um, you can run this polyphonically by enabling more voices. You have up to 32 voices. Um, you don't really get the full um, extent of the uh, TMT modeling technology in monophonic mode like this. But what this does is every single voice um, with the TMT turned on actually gets modeled individually. It's the same technology that they have in the SSL channels. Um, from Brainworks, and you can really kind of hear this shine when you're running in unison mode, which is also kind of unique to um, this plugin. Uh, it's not present on some of the other versions of the uh, Abraham Sim that are available. So we'll we'll leave it off first. We're going to run this in 32 voice mode uh, with unison on, and take a listen to what that sounds like. Now, turning this on, you'll hear it's subtle, but it just adds a thickness to it because every single component, uh, each voice is being modeled slightly differently, so there are differences between each voice. We'll turn that on. And you'll hear it's a really nice thick sound. Bring the spread up as well. Really, really fat sounding um, oscillator that. So let's move into the oscillator controls over here. Uh, you have um, the volume controls for the oscillators are actually located in the filter section. Uh, you have a saw or a pulse and you can mix between the two. You have volume control for the saw and for the pulse. So you can have a look, it works kind of like this. Actually, let's turn off the unison mode. So volume. And if you switch over to the other side, you have the pulse. 
and you can dial it in both oscillators at the same time. And then you have the frequency, the pitch for the oscillators up here. You also have a sync mode. And this is a nice little addition as well, is the FM. Uh, you can modulate F, uh, VCO1 uh, with VCO2. So if we enable the FM, let's just dial this one down and turn the FM up. And there you have it. Um, we'll turn the FM off for now. You have some modulation uh, sources for each of the VCOs. Uh, these are hardwired ones. You can uh, modulate pretty much anything with anything using the mod section up at the top. Um, but these ones are hardwired to the to the synth, uh, so you can modulate the f using LFO one or the envelopes. Envelope two for VCO two. Envelope one for. Uh, VCO1, or using the LFO1, which is down here, um, we can do the frequency. Well, let's disable this one. And double clicking on any of the, um, con oh, sorry, control clicking on any of the controls will reset it to its default state. So there you have the pitch modulation, and if you're using a pulse, you can mod mod modulate the pulse width as well. Okay. Now, uh, down at the bottom, you also have another pulse width. Uh, this is the center point for the pulse, pulse uh, width, which is a static control. And then your spread control, which we looked at, um, which kind of really shines when you've got this in unison mode. Um, let's move on to the filter now. Uh, we have the v uh, VCF section over here. Now the filter for the uh, Oberhausen, uh, I'm just getting my filter controls there on the keyboard. It has a step control here to the bandpass filter. And then uh, you can flick it up into low pass mode. And then from there, it actually fades through the notch filter and the high pass filter. So we can take a listen to that quickly. So that's the low pass. And then using the VCF type, we can dial it into a notch. right up to a high pass filter. So it's quite a nice, um, unique filter that you find on the SIM. And this is uh, modeled pretty much the same as the original units as well. Now you also have some modulation for the hardwired modulation for the frequency, uh, the VCF frequency. We can set this to envelope two or LFO1 once again. We'll leave that on VCF, uh, on envelope 2 for now, uh, which is going to actually bring us down to the envelope section. So we have envelope 2 now modulating the filter cutoff. And envelope one is uh, the volume envelope. So you can bring the sustain down. And there you have it. So we've got LFO, uh, LFO one situated in the middle here, which is obviously hardwired to some of these. Um, LFO one is just a standard um, uh, sine wave, which cannot be synced. It's a free, rain, a free running uh, LFO. LFO two, on the other hand, you can sync to your DAW's clock rate and set that up there. Uh, you also have a re-trigger option, so each note will re-trigger the, um, the LFO on, on playing. This one as well, you have the options of a square and a saw wave in addition to the sign as well. Right, so I want to take a look now. Oh, lastly, um, you also have this VCF uh, MS style here, uh, which is also something you find a lot on Brainworks plugins, um, which lets you fade between the mid side. This one kind of um, centered like this will have just a completely wet signal running through the filter. 
you'll hear as you go into the side that it'll actually bleed through some of the dry signal from the oscillators that side. So you can get some interesting effects by messing around with the uh, mid-side balance there as well. Um, I want to take a look quickly at the uh, modulation section. So we are currently on the mod section up at the top here. Uh, these ones can be enabled by clicking there and um, then setting up your source. And let's choose envelope 2 just for this demonstration. And we're going to put that up to max. And let's say I want to do the VCO1 frequency. Now, I want to just show you the stacking option you have here. So that we have pitch modulation happening now. Um, but this only does up to 12 um, uh, semitones up. So if you want to get more control, you can actually stack your modifiers. Um, so we can do exactly the same again. Choose envelope 2, VCO frequency 1. Pull that one up as well. And you'll hear yeah, it goes a little bit higher this time. This one again, exactly the same. Let's turn that on. So there you have it. You can stack all your mod options like that uh, to get sort of more sensitive controls. Let's take a look at the ARP section. We're going to click up there and enable our ARP. Uh, you have a couple of different modes for the ARP up here. We'll set it to something like up and um, set our clock divider. We'll do sixteenths. That's the speed of the um, appreciator. So you can also set to run through different octaves as well. There's also a hold function, so I can let go of the keys. There you have it. Um, so that is our appreciator section. We can move up to the effects now as well and take a look at some of the effects on offer. So these are all uh, from Brainworks as well. Um, one that I really like is the Airband, which is taken straight out of the um, Mag EQ, uh, which gives you sort of a high boost. Let's take a listen to that one. Uh, you have distortion, flanger, a chorus, and these can also be freely routed around. So you can just click and drag these around to get the correct um, sequence of effects. For example, we might want to run a delay and stick on some reverb right at the end. Uh, you can enable the effects there and then take a listen to what they sound like. Let's just uh, bring that back down again. And then you have it, that's your effect section. Um, so that pretty much wraps things up for uh, BX Oberhausen. Um, it's a fantastic little synth, uh, simple but big, big sounds that you get out of this and very convincing as far as the analog modeling goes. I highly recommend you go and check this out uh, from Brainworks and Plugin Alliance. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you again soon here at Sonic Academy. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.